Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sesame. There's a video here today for you guys a new video and I know I know it's weird I do I got a new camera. I got a new HD camera So now you can see me in all HD just so you guys know um, but yeah I bring you guys the 2020 version of how to make your own alerts I went through all the questions I want to I want to make sure I answered everything I could have in the short amount of time That also makes it super informative still but shorter more quicker and easier for you guys to follow And I think I honestly killed it and I just I freaking hope you guys enjoy this video so very much man truly and just so you guys know, today's video is sponsored by AE Juice. And if you guys have no idea who AE Juice is, then AE Juice is a plugin built for After Effects and now is available for Adobe Premiere for some of their assets as well. Where you guys can basically explore motion design assets for hours while also saving hours of your time not having to do all the motions yourself. They're a proud returning sponsor to the channel. And if you guys were to check down below in the description, you guys can actually download their manager plugin and try every single asset they have to offer for free for seven days. So yes, that means if you guys literally want to build your alerts from today's video with the incredible assets they have to offer, you can literally do so and decide to purchase at a later date if you guys choose to, but the actual current offer that they have is also like literally a steal. With our new best-selling cyberpunk HUD elements, you can literally make stream packages super easily. Cough, cough. By the way, you can download it for free for seven days. Literally, it's it's incredible. It's one of those things that I think you, of course, need to all have for After Effects. It's not new on my channel here, but if you guys are new, if it's new to you, I would definitely recommend you guys please check it down below in the description. And uh, yeah, let's just get this thing going. But seriously, guys, if you guys want to go ahead and check them out, please go ahead and do so. They're not new to this channel. They're incredible partners for me. And I just think you guys should definitely just go honestly check them out. Please, please, please. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. Enjoy today's video here today. And let's just get this thing going. I hope, I hope I did it. I hope I did you guys justice. If you guys have any other questions, by the way, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try my hardest to answer all of them. And uh, yeah, enjoy. All right, homies, now to quickly design this super clean alert, the first thing you guys want to do is use the rectangle marking tool to size up for your actual main box. Now, do not be afraid to make a little bit of creative control and make the box size whatever size you would like, but keep in mind the breathing space needed for the actual main body text. So what I mean by that is, the skinnier and smaller the box is, the smaller the text then needs to be as well. And so as long as you guys are aware of that, you can have space to make the box size whatever you wish, but of course, just keep in mind, just gotta make it smaller uh, with the text. And then when you guys are good with the box size that you guys end up choosing, make sure you guys make a new layer, right click somewhere on the canvas in your marquee tool selection, and then choose fill, and then just go with white. And now homies, with your desired box sizes, create a cool shadow word in the actual background. In my case, I used the word new and made it large enough for it to fit just outside the white canvas that we made for the main box and took the opacity and lowered it down to 5%. Then you guys want to make sure you clipping mask the text layer to the actual main box just by holding alt on your keyboard and then clicking right in between the actual layers. Another thing to keep in mind guys is I'm very aware if you guys were to right click and then actually clip mask a layer by usual but for a text layer it's not actually seen visibly. You have to make sure you of course like I said before hold alt on your keyboard and then click right in between the layers and it will give you that option basically just by doing a shortcut. Now following that we want to make sure we add ourselves a cool little sub box that you can basically change the words inside corresponding to the notification. So for me, of course, I'm going to use the words new subscriber, and of course for you, it might be your donation alert, or it might be a cheer alert, whatever it happens to be, this is basically where that's going to live in. So once again, you can kind of see, I just went ahead and added a nice little rectangle marquee tool box, very skinny, right in the top left, it can be wherever you guys wish it to be. And then I chose a pretty clean color to go with it by just using the color overlay layer options inside the actual new layer that we created. Then to finish off my sub box layer, I added a new layer and filled in a small black rectangle towards the left hand side of my sub box just to give it a little more something. And then guys, to basically finish everything off, you guys would add a few more boxes very loosely behind the actual main boxes just to help fill a little more space for attention and also help for motion elements when we move into After Effects. And there you guys have it. Now you have your super clean alert that you of course can customize whatever which way you guys would like. But right, right before we actually put it into After Effects, we want to do one more thing. You guys want to make sure you combine these layers together. That way it makes it way more easier for you guys when you guys are moving into After Effects and doing all your keyframing. Be sure to group the new subscriber text and everything in the sub box alert. Then make sure you guys choose the shadow word that you chose and then the main box and also group those together. And now you guys should have all of your layers down to about five or so. One being your main box, the second one being your sub box, and the other three layers being the three random shapes that we had added. Also make sure that you guys get rid of your placement text that you guys had. The only thing that should be there is in your sub box that says new subscriber or donation or whatever you guys end up choosing. And finally guys, to finish it off, you guys want to make sure you guys choose the crop tool inside Photoshop, which is also the quick shortcut for C. 
and now taking the actual crop tool going right around on our alert just enough space for it to of course sit inside and then of course make sure you guys turn off your background then you guys can save the psd under whatever name you guys need and you guys are now finally ready to move it right into after effects all right guys let's get this thing going right here right now so i'm inside after effects and i want to hopefully make this as clear easy cut and just like straightforward as possible okay so what we're looking at right now really quickly is just the end point of what our project should look like okay so this way you can kind of see the idea is having all these simple individual boxes come in at a really cool stagnant kind of rate, different timing, and of course then all come out after about five or six seconds, just with this really cool smooth kind of motion, very simple to do, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to basically do it. Now, I wanna make sure I start off myself the same way you guys would see yourselves, which is in this new project, blank canvas sort of an idea like this, okay? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, to bring in our PSD, we wanna go to where it says file, import, file, and then you guys wanna make sure you guys find your PSD, boom, I found my PSD, press import then on this drop down here you want to make sure it says composition retain layer sizes and then layer options is edible layer styles press ok now you'll notice over here it'll have your psd name and then the type will be composition this is what you basically want to double click on now if you don't see this for some ever whatever reason right you might be under your effects controls just go where it says the left of it right here and you'll notice the word project this is exactly where you want to click on and that is how you guys be able to see your actual composition layers also, keep in mind, if you don't have the project layer at all, <clears throat> if you guys were to go to Windows and you guys see project right here, that is also how you guys can bring up the project table, okay? So, now I'm going to double click on this. And you guys notice, all my layers, we named them all, all that good stuff, all five are inside this right away, right? Now, there's three things to quickly note. The first thing is, if you only have one layer here, that means inside uh, Photoshop, okay, you basically had all of your layers inside a group. Now, if you hit them inside of a group, what that says to After Effects is there's another composition there, okay? So basically, to open up all your layers again, you want to make sure you double-click on that one single layer that you might see, okay? Now, this is for the people that did have it in a group inside Photoshop, but if you didn't have it in a group, like I didn't, I had all of them in the loose, single kind of flowing layers, that is why I see all mine right away. That's just one thing, okay? The second thing is, if you guys don't see this little transparency kind of grid here going on in the background, notif uh, noti uh, notifying you guys that it is transparent, Make sure you guys go over here and toggle this on or off. I want it to be, of course, on, okay? The third thing is, the last thing, if you uh, right-click someone on the canvas and use composition settings, you guys want to make sure that you're on a six second or so dur uh, duration, okay? So you can go, I would say anywhere between like a six and a 10 second duration is pretty good based on whatever it is. Like this new subscriber, I think that's pretty long enough, really good, really engaging timing, and then kind of go away, okay? So for me, that is six seconds. Now, of course, it goes milliseconds, then seconds, then minutes, and then I have hours. So make sure you guys are not doing six uh, minutes, you guys are doing six seconds. That's this one right here. Then you can press OK, and now we are officially good to go, okay? So what I wanna go to do here is I'm gonna highlight all of these layers right away, okay? Then with these highlighted layers now, I'm gonna press P on my keyboard, just like so, and this will give me the position key for every single one of these, the position option already open for us, okay? <clears throat> Now, if you guys look at the 1.00 or the 1 colon 00, that is indicating one second, then 200 is indicating two seconds. So I want to basically start off myself and base myself around this one second mark, okay? Now, for this part, I'm going to basically start off with the, uh, the new subscription box, right? I'm going to hold control, select the main subscription box as well, or the main box, excuse me. So basically selecting the main box and the subscription box both at once by holding control. And you can see right here now, I want to go ahead on this position. Towards the left of it is a stopwatch. You basically want to click on this stopwatch just like so. Now, this will give you guys two... Uh, uh, how do you say, uh, keyframes here because you of course had both of them selected. So whatever you do to one thing, it will do the other thing as well. That's why I told you guys to select both of them, okay? So for whatever reason, if you guys cannot see your keyframe, it's because you probably press U or something like that. So if you guys wanna bring up any keyframe things that you have on an uh, individual layer, you just basically click on that layer and then press U on your keyboard, just like so you can see the keyframe is coming in and out of focus. That is basically saying, hey, we're turning on and off our keyframes or basically finding your keyframes, okay? That's so, just so you guys know that. That's like a cool little uh, tip. So we're gonna take our blue cursor here. Now we keyframe that one second mark. Take it all the way to the beginning. We're gonna click on the new subscriber box once again, the main box once again, and bring it towards the beginning. Now you'll notice I basically put it on a straight line by clicking, holding shift, and moving it towards the left, okay? That makes uh, the holding shift part basically make sure it keeps on a very straight axis, okay? Now if you guys notice, if I press play, 
We go from the left towards the right, and it's very boring, sort of stagnant, basic movement. But this is basically, of course, that, that just that just indicates that you're going in the right direction, okay? So the next thing we want to do is we want to change this stagnant movement to be more of a kind of a cool flow to it. So the way we do that is I'm gonna start off with the main box for this. In this case, we're gonna basically highlight these two keyframes. We're gonna right click on one of them, go to keyframe assistance, then go to easy ease. And then we wanna go into the graph editor, which is in this table right here. Click it once. Now, if my table, this is what my table looks like, and this is how I'm gonna be editing mine. If you want it to look like mine, yours by default, if you've never opened this in your life before, looks like this, just so you guys know. We wanna make sure it won't look like mine. You just right click once again and do edit speed graph. So, to ever zoom in, you can take this top bar here, move it towards the left, that'll zoom you in. Now, if I just quickly highlight these two points right here, you'll notice two little handles are coming out as well. So these two little handles, if I just take this left one for a second, move it towards the right for a quick explanation. Okay, this little part right here is the midpoint. So you'll notice what this is saying, if I kind of scroll through my timeline, this is basically saying it's going really, 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 really slow at the start, and then it'll be really quick to finish. Okay, now if I move this towards the left on this side, you'll notice, oops, if I kind of go, <clears throat> excuse me, go through my uh, timeline, this is basically saying it's gonna go really fast and then super slow at the end. So that's basically the kind of slope and the idea of what this is telling you. So that way you kind of understand that a little bit. But for us, we're gonna basically kind of neglect, uh, neglect that for a second because we're gonna take this, move it towards the middle. This is the middle point right here, basically really close to it. Move this one fairly close to it as well. You can see how it's just kind of like a very squished uh, uh, area there. We don't want to get out of the uh, actual graph editor by basically clicking on the graph editor once again. You'll notice on the big box, you won't have a stagnant movement anymore. It'll look very clean. But since it's already, of course, corresponding with this box right here, we want to make sure that we give this easy ease as well. So we're going to highlight these keyframes, uh, highlight these two keyframes, click on one, right click on one, keyframe assistance, easy ease again, graph editor, go into it, highlight, drag in, drag in. It is literally that simple, just so you guys know. Boom right? Get out of it by clicking on the graph editor again. And then you'll notice now these two things have these really solid, very cool flowing, you know, kind of quality motion to them. So the cool thing about this is, right, you guys notice right now it's kind of going at the same time and editing at the same time. If I were to kind of go right around here about the, about the 45 second mark, okay? I'm going to take the actual new subscriber box. If I take this last keyframe, move this in, you'll notice this is basically saying the timing of this is going to be faster. Now, if I move it away, this is basically saying, hey, it's going to come in a little bit later. So if I play this out really quickly, right, you'll notice, boom, the box is in, and then the new subscriber comes in. But you'll also notice we're basically in one second, and now this comes in at one second and 15 milliseconds, right? So we want this to basically be a little more quicker. So I'm going to take these two keyframes by highlighting both of them by holding control, right? Taking this and moving this a little bit further in, right? So now if I look at it, it's still ending at the one second frame, right? Boom, boom. So you kind of see this really fun sort of thing that's happening. It's basically saying, hey, a little slower, a little bit more faster on one of them. And this is basically what we want to do for every single box. So I'm going to quickly do this one right here, and I'll do the last ones in a little speed art. So this one right here, this extra box, this uh, blue one right here, right? I'm going to basically go around one second frame, uh, position, go to the end, or the beginning, excuse me, uh, keyframe this one after this, holding shift, moving it towards the left so that way when it's going through it's basically going just like so right highlight right click keyframe assistance easy ease graph editor highlight here drag in the middle drag in the middle and you'll notice once again if i go out and press play you'll see it kind of drags in and comes in just like so i want this kind of be a little bit later though in the in the reaction here so boom 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 and then boom that is basically all we're doing is so gonna do the same exact thing to so these two black boxes and get right back to you guys. All right, guys, perfect. I think this is pretty much exactly how I wanna have it. So basically all these individual boxes come in at their own simple time, but also are all still there in a basically around the one second frame mark, right? You can see that right here. But if you guys ever wanna make anything faster, if you don't wanna say, hey, I, wanna, I don't want it to be like basically all done at one second, that's fine. The way you do it is you highlight the keyframe here, hold control, highlight here. While still the holy control, I'm highlighting all of these just like so. Then I can take these keyframes, move it towards the right to make it a little more faster. Right, so now you'll notice it's the same exact thing, but it'll just be a little bit more faster and everything's gonna kind of fill in in the exact same spot that needs to be really quickly. So, now to finish this off, it's still gonna be here, it's flowing in, it stays here, stays here, stays here, all the way at the end, but we want this to basically fade out and kind of like completely move outside of the canvas. So, I'm gonna start this at the five second frame. So five seconds here, 
right? I'm gonna highlight all these boxes again, and I'm gonna make sure I click on the position uh, one more time, but I can't click here, that'll turn everything off. Make sure you guys click over here, and this is basically adding and removing a keyframe. So I'm gonna click on this, and since I highlighted all of them, all of these are also now keyframe, and you can see right here at the five seconds, which is perfect. So if I just go up 10 frames or so, right? I'm gonna highlight all these once again, then I'm gonna click on it once on the canvas, hold shift, move it towards the right. Everything now is moved towards the right. Now, if you notice, it's gonna be, yep, it's gonna go in, right? It'll wait these four seconds out, right? And at this, at the five second mark, it'll kind of all go away. Now, if that's a little too fast, that's okay. We can actually go ahead and move it up a little bit more, all these keyframes. But basically, I wanna go right towards like about 25% of the way there, take some of these and move them to the left or away. I'm actually moving this one away, I'll move this one towards the left. Uh, let's move this closer or away as well. And then this one to the left, this one away, this one to the left. So we're kind of playing with these timings right here by just moving some to the left, moving to the right. And then basically, if you want to kind of see how it looks, boom, it kind of all kind of flows out at this really cool time, which doesn't look like more of like a, just like an entire block moving out. This gives it a more of a flow. And it looks pretty freaking good. And I actually like that a lot. So flows in. Now we wait the four seconds out, and at five seconds, it'll all flow out. This is basically exactly what we freaking want. And basically, then the last thing I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and add a little bit of motion, uh, motion blur as well. So what I end up doing here is I'm gonna just highlight all of these right just like so. This first box is the motion blur. You'll see it says motion blur. First box, you wanna go ahead and click that, right? And then you also wanna make sure that this is selected. Make sure that this, of course, is right here is blue, okay? If this is not blue, you're not doing it right. Okay, so make sure that is blue. And what you wanna do, if I kinda re uh, redo it now, you'll see that the motion blur is now kinda going on, okay? And of course, again, again, it'll fade out just like so. So, I think it looks pretty freaking dope. And then of course, now the actual super final thing I wanna do is add in a little bit of spice, which is gonna be an AEG. So I'm gonna quickly save this again, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead, go to where it says Windows, and I'm gonna go to my AE Juice Pack Manager 3. Once again, please check out the download description down below. I mean, it helps out, like, it's not just me that's using it. I have a lot of friends on Heart Thieves that are using it as well. It helps them with the, like, their editing and stuff like that. So trust me when I tell you, it's a lifesaver. It's also just a like, really big flex that you can just do really dope stuff without actually even doing anything, like actually doing anything at all, okay? So for me, I'm gonna use the shape elements and I wanna use the lines, brother, because I wanna use this right here in particular. I'm gonna double click on this. Let's use number 29 as well. And let's use number 28. So these are all different kind of lines and I wanna go ahead and just exit out. Okay, now for me, I'm gonna press R for rotation because I want this to be on a 90 degree angle, right? I wanna press R for rotation here and R for rotation here. 90 degrees and another 90 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and quickly turn on transparency, right? Because I already know that this needs to be a little bit further up so we can actually start seeing these lines really quick. Oops, boom. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this one I'll drag this below here. We're gonna take this top one here, right? And I'm gonna put this over here. Then I'll take this super long one, which is right here, and put this up top. But I want the long one to kind of be like first, right? I want the long one to be first, and then I want this one over here to kind of be... No, I want this one to be kind of last. I want this one to come in first. Okay, so I just wanna kind of figure this out. Boom, boom, and then this last one will come in like right there. Okay, that works for me. Okay, what I also wanna do is I'm gonna change the color for every single one of them. So A juice is super easy to change colors as well. You can just kind of see how I did it. Double click on this line right here. I open up this, go to my effects. It'll say colors. I want this to be pure white. Press okay again. Now I'm gonna go in again. Once again, I'm gonna do 29 for a second. I wanna make this color as well to be white, just like this, okay. Then I'm gonna go back over here, number 30. I'm again, control, color, boom, white. Now if I go back, this should all be white. Perfect, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it just adds like a little bit of something else. And this is exactly kind of the stuff we want. But of course, when this is not in frame here, we'll just kind of, you won't be able to see it right now, but you know, kind of like flicker, flicker, flicker. It'll just act almost like a cool shining element to it. And I think it looks freaking dope. But of course, please guys, explore it, enjoy it. The craziest part is you guys can try out the bundle entirely for free. So even if you guys don't want to actually purchase it at the moment, that is perfectly fine. If you want to give it a shot, literally every single bundle is for free. You can use it as a free actual, literally the full thing for free. I mean, Check it out. I crap like I shit you not, okay? Like you guys already seen this a few times in actual alert videos and all that good stuff.
stuff. They always, always pull through and they always have incredible stuff as well. I mean, just like, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. If you go to the settings, you have different effects as well. I mean, check it out. Like you're literally missing out if you don't have it. I promise you, you will thank me later. But now that we have this going on for ourselves, we can basically add this into media encoder. And by doing so, we go to composition add to uh, Adobe Media Encoder. And of course, when we add it into Media Encoder, I will give you guys my settings as well and leave you guys off over there. And then of course, later on going into Streamlabs, I actually put everything in. So as you can see, everything's looking freaking dope. I'm gonna go ahead and run this baby out and I'm sure you guys how to do that right now. All right, guys, now once Media Encoder opens and you're all gonna actually do the actual render process, you guys wanna make sure you click on this first sort of blue text right here where it says Windows Media. You click on this. Now it should come up with like dynamic link connection. If this takes too long, right? Sometimes this happens. If it takes too long and it does not connect, press cancel, remove this, okay? Right, and then go back over here to uh, After Effects and go back into Composition, add a Media Encoder, and then just wait for it to pop up again. And then when you guys do it again, it should not take long at all. All right, so I went ahead, of course, and reloaded it. So if I click on this once again, you'll notice it won't take as long this time. So if it ever happens to you, make sure you guys just kind of get out, click back in, and then reload it. And if it does it again, maybe just click on this one uh, the second time. And then my, if for some reason mine does that every now and again, doesn't do it every time, but it might not do it for you ever. But just if it does, keep that in mind. Of course, reopen it. And if it doesn't work again, close it, and then open this second one first, and then open this first, you know, the first one, okay? Just so you guys know, okay? So format. I'm gonna change this to where it says WebM, okay? Now, we didn't have any audio exported, so we're gonna make sure we turn this off. That way it'll give us no audio channels and uh, nothing to worry about. So image settings, I'm gonna turn this, uh, kind of like, you know, drop this down or bring it back up because we don't really need to worry about this at all. What we wanna worry about is in the Kodak settings. On the method, we want to do constrained quality. We're gonna take the bit rate and put it basically 75% of the way, so right in between the middle of this right here and the middle of this right here. So for me, I have 7,385 if you wanna get the same exact numbers that I have right now. If I scroll down, you'll notice the words include alpha channel. We wanna make sure we have that selected, okay? If I just scroll down a little bit more, but not, no, I actually have to scroll down, but it says uh, use maximum render quality. We wanna also have that checked, and then we wanna press okay. Once we press okay, and of course, change your output is, uh, settings right here as well. Your output is right here, output name, but I wanna my, keep mine as that because I already have it rendered out actually. If I click on this green bar, it'll render it out and put it in that actual same file wherever you put it, and then we'll bring you guys inside Streamlabs where I'll put the actual WebM file inside Streamlabs and show you guys how to actually center your text and all that good stuff and get yourself a cool alert. So we're gonna go over to Streamlabs and end it over there. All right, guys, now we are finally in Streamlabs. You guys are ready to finally put together everything you guys just made. And uh, hopefully, I'll just, oh, look at my dashboard. Just saying, quick little plug. If you guys did not know, I've been streaming every single basic, uh, trying to stream. Oh, someone just followed, literally just now. How crazy is that? Just saying. Uh, but yeah, if you guys did not know, I've been streaming on Twitch for the past month or so. At least every single night, we call it Real Designer Hours. We just do 1v1s, challenges, portfolio reviews, and we just all around just chill out while I do client work. You guys just all sit around in a nice, really cool community. So I just want to let you guys know, if you guys want to know where I've been, I haven't been streaming on YouTube at all lately. I've been doing all the streaming on Twitch, which is like crazy. We were for partner we're waiting for the actual announcement to see if we get it or not but yeah 120 people always come out every night which is super freaking dope so if you guys want to be join uh join them and with you know with me we can have a really good conversation have a lot of fun and uh, that's it just wanted to let you guys know it's in the description down below okay little self plug um yeah why is everyone following now this is so weird anyway alert box okay so with this alert box we're of course going to be doing the subscription right so if we just test the scripture really quickly right now you'll notice that there is nothing going on right now okay so this is how i want you guys to set it up so the layout i want you to be in the middle which is basically the image and the text in front for the uh, 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 alert animation we want it to fade in and then slide out to the right the reason why we're sliding out to the right is in after effects you guys remember we made everything slide out to the right at the end so if the text also slides out to the right it just makes it look all super cohesive so make sure you choose slide out to the right right just right around the the you know near the bottom okay now the message template you only want to basically keep the name alone because obviously as you know if we if you guys leave the name and then has subscribe you're going to have you know the new subscriber you know subtext box that we had in, in photoshop and did that photoshop sort of subtext and if you have has subscribed again it's just as weird having it twice so make sure you guys just have the name alone and then the text animation on none the image we're going to change image right now we're going to upload our alert i believe i called it alert <laughs> excuse me open this up we're going to click on it press select 
Okay, now it's already in there. We have our sound, we have our sound volume. Alert duration is basically the exact same timing that we actually fade everything off. So at five seconds, you guys remember in After Effects, we faded everything off. So they do the same exact thing inside Streamlabs, faded off at five seconds. Same thing with the text delay. We made everything stop or be basically finish the animation at one second. This is why the alert is also delayed at one second. So we kind of make sure all that timed uh, is all timed. So if you guys had an After Effects, a 10 second, you know, fade out afterwards, make sure that this is also at 10 seconds in Streamlabs, okay? Now for this, uh, font settings, we kind of just have Beavis New, font size at 72. You guys might have a little bit different stuff, but black color, white highlight. Let's just go ahead and press save and give this a little bit of a test. If I just test right now, let's see, okay. As you can see, it's super clean, super HD. I think it just looks super dope, as you can see, right? If I test it again, you'll see it fades in, right? And then you see the text will also like fly out to the right, which will make everything look super freaking cohesive. However, if you guys notice as well, I like to always let you guys know, right? You can tell that the text is not in the center. Now to put it in the center is also not that hard at all. I'll give you guys a coding in the actual description down below so you guys don't have to memorize it, but you know, it's not too difficult at all regardless, but over here you can see it's more to the top left. So what I want to do is I'm going to have this over here. I've had saved over here. What I want you guys to do is go CSS and the coding. Scroll down a little bit to about 30, right? Line 30. Go at the end. Press enter. Press control V. What I'm going to do is control V, right? And I'll put my actual little coding in here. So it's margin left, 8%, height, and then uh, colon 5. And I'm going to just go backspace once right there, right? Then I'm going to press save again. Now, if I show you this uh, test description, it should be a little bit further down. Right, you can see now it's a little bit too far down. So for me, I already know what's gonna work for me is around the 23 on height, okay? And then around eight on the margin, we're gonna save that again. Now, be wary, this is a little bit glitchy, the actual Streamlabs site, so make sure you guys save a few times and test it a few times before you make the actual decision that it's not working and or not fixing and or actually making correction, just so you guys know, okay? So I'm gonna test again, and as you guys can see, margin left is a little bit too, too much. Let's do seven, and then I think we'll call it right here. Test description again, and you'll see it should be pretty much pretty good in the freaking middle. So that is basically how you guys fix the actual correlation of where it is on the actual panel, uh, on the actual alert. But that's it. I want to leave it super clean, super tight for you guys. And I hope you guys did enjoy today's video here today. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys are now maybe, uh, be able to have your own alerts. I know it's, you know, not everyone can purchase them. So that's why I give you guys the videos at least how to actually do them yourself if you guys could and have the resources in Adobe and to do so. So I love you guys so freaking very much. Of course, shout out uh, Aegis one more time. I appreciate you guys for sponsoring this video. Like I said below, in the description, please go ahead and download Aegis. If you guys are ever gonna get into After Effects or even gonna be doing these alerts, there's way more stuff that I did not even show. Hopefully I showed them at the beginning of the video, but please go enjoy it. It is literally free for the like seven days or something like that. You guys can literally use it for your alert for this like alone and then never use it again if you guys don't wish to but if you guys choose to you can also purchase it and enjoy it and love it but yo i'll tell you guys later Senso hq out do not forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later much love and enjoy and maybe i'll see you on twitch love you